Hey guys, this is Craig Migliaccio from AEC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is the effect of a liquid line restriction problem that's on an air conditioning system and how it affects the high side pressure and also the subcooling. So that's what I'm going to be going over today. There's a common misconception about the pressure increasing very high when you have a liquid line restriction problem. Well, that's not necessarily the case. That may be the case when you have somebody overcharging the system. So I first want to just show you how we know that we have a liquid line restriction problem. And the reason is over here on our, our vapor gauge, we're reading uh, right about 46 PSI. And if we bring that in to the green inner ring because this is an R22 air conditioner, we see we have a saturated temperature of 21 degrees. So then we look at our temp sensor that's on this large vapor line where our blue hose is connected to, where we're reading our pressure and the, the temperature on the line is 65 degrees. So you have 65 minus 21, and you're left with 44 degrees of total superheat. So you have a very high superheat. And this is on a system that has a thermostatic expansion valve like this. However, uh, the indicators for liquid line restriction problem are not gonna be different whether you have a, a piston or a TXV. Now let's look at the, the subcooling and you have, looks like to be 193 PSIG, and we bring that into the green inner ring for saturated temperature, and we read right about 97 degrees as our saturated temperature. And we have right here on T1, we're reading 85 degrees on our liquid line, and subcooling, you can find that by having the saturated temperature here minus the line temperature, so 97 right now, minus 86 and we have about 10 degrees of subcooling. So the subcooling is normal to high and the, the target on this system right here up on the rating plate, it says eight degrees is a target subcooling. So our subcooling is gonna be a little bit higher when we have a liquid line restriction problem. Now, this is what I wanted to discuss with you. And the issue here is that people are getting confused and thinking, hey, if I have a liquid line restriction problem at the evaporator coil and this blue gauge is telling me the, the pressure and saturated temperature in the middle of the evaporator coil, then that means that we have more refrigerant in the outdoor unit. And that's correct, you do have more refrigerant at the outdoor unit. But that does not necessarily mean that your pressure is higher. It means your subcooling will be a little higher because you have more liquid refrigerant in the outdoor unit. You gotta remember that you're absorbing heat on the evaporator coil right at the low side of the system so that's where you're absorbing it at and you're rejecting it here at your outdoor condenser coil so if you are not absorbing any heat here then you are not going to have a high pressure over here the only times that you may have a high pressure over here and also a very very high subcooling is if somebody overcharged the system thinking that if they kept putting more and more refrigerant into the unit then they're going to be able to raise the vapor pressure up above freezing so you gotta see that, uh, you gotta make sure that the evaporator coil is above 32 degrees, is a saturated temperature. And on a TXV system, it doesn't work the same as on a piston system. If you have a TXV, if you add more refrigerant into the system, it does not necessarily mean that the vapor pressure is going to increase. It just means that the subcooling over here on this high side gauge and on your liquid line, your temperature, the subcooling is gonna increase. But on a system with a piston, if you add more refrigerant into the system, then you are gonna have your vapor pressure increase unless you have a liquid line restriction, meaning that this, this metering device inside this piston chamber is clogged or this capillary tube right here is clogged. Maybe you have a strainer that looks like this right in the piston chamber. Maybe this is all clogged up, the stainless steel screen or maybe the filter dryer is, is clogged up and it's just not allowing the liquid refrigerant to, to get to the metering device and go into the evaporator quilt in order to absorb the heat in the building. So I hope this is gonna clear this up a little bit, regardless of whether we have a liquid line restriction problem or if the, the system is working fine and your vapor saturated temperature is say at around 40 degrees and maybe you have a superheat of 12 or 14 degrees, your pressure over here is not gonna really change much. It's gonna be probably about the same thing. When your system is functioning normally and you have a correct vapor saturated temperature, your subcoin would probably be around eight degrees if this system was charged correctly. 
When you have a liquid line restriction problem, there's more refrigerant in the outdoor unit and you're going to have a slightly higher subcoin. So in this case, we have about 10 degrees of subcoin, which is about two degrees higher than if the system uh, did not have a liquid line restriction problem. But your pressure is going to be the same. It just means that your, your spread here between your saturated temperature on your high side gauge and the actual temperature on the line is going to be a little wider. You're going to have more subcoin because your refrigerant is in the outdoor unit and it's in liquid form and it's making more passes through the tubing, you have more of a subcoin reading. But I just want to make sure that you don't confuse a liquid lime restriction problem with extremely high subcoin, like 20 degrees or 30 degrees because I have had some people ask that question on the last video I did uh, in reference to the liquid line restrictions that they've seen, they've seen the pressures much, much higher. But that's because somebody added maybe an extra pound or two pounds of refrigerant into the system and all that's happened is this pressure has increased and made a big spread between the saturated temperature here and the actual temperature on the line and that's what they get used to seeing. But in reference to troubleshooting this, you got to make sure that you're aware that you're not always going to have an extremely high subcoin from somebody overcharging the unit. Your liquid pressure is going to be about the same as it normally would on a, on a normally charged system that's functioning properly. If you want to learn more about troubleshooting air conditioning systems, check out our book, The Refrigerant Charging and Service Procedures for Air Conditioning. So in this book, we go over the preparation of a system for refrigerant, checking the charge, and also the troubleshooting. So the whole point is to know all the indicators when you're troubleshooting real quickly in order to solve the problems. So the superheat, the subcoring, the saturated temperatures, the delta T, all of those indicators. And you want to be able to do that fairly quickly. We have our thousand question workbook that's meant as a complement for our book. And it also comes with a self-study answer key and we have our quick reference cards for out in the field. Now these are made out of polystyrene and we have all of our indicators for all the different problems here. We have cards for checking the charge. We have also other cards for the PT chart and also refrigerant weights. All these are available over at our website at ecservicetech.com and also over at amazon.com. We also have our ebook available over at Google Play. Hope you enjoyed yourself and we'll see you next time at AEC Service Tech channel.